Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today we're going to fix up and reinstall the mower deck for our John Deere L111 lawn tractor. I'm also going to fix up this deck because it's looking a little skanky. Um, and I will put a new belt and a new set of blades because the blades on it are absolutely destroyed. Now we'll take apart the deck. Not really much to the deck, it's just a few little bolts and everything will be off in a jiffy. Taking it apart, I managed to bust off one bolt in this spindle and two bolts in this spindle. So we're going to have to have a go at getting them out. A little heat and a little patience and we should be okay. On second thought, um, I don't know if you can see it in the video. The blocks where the blades attach to have come loose on both of my original ones. So they're junk. Um, I found another pair that uh, the bearings are good in them, but they've got even more broken bolts in them. But I'm going to go over to the drill press and see if I can drill them out. Problem with these things is when they're cast, they, they, they finish it. They don't put any threads in the holes. And these are kind of a, a self-threading bolt. And I guess they do that so that the thing doesn't rattle itself apart in use. But that makes it also get just jammed in there. Because these bolts don't really um, cut the thread as much as they just kind of burrow a thread. And they're just jammed right in there. So anyway, I'm going to drill them out. And then we'll... Um, I'm probably going to change these to like... 5 16 that it looks pretty close that's an m8 i believe and we'll we'll just make them 5 16 more easy i've got these two that have good stems but you can see the bearings are wiped out of them and um they've got a lot of bolts busted off in them so my other one is junk anyway. I'm going to go over to the press and see if I can press it apart. I mean, if I could press this thing off, then I can I can take the bearings out of the other one and I can basically make two out of four. Now we're getting somewhere. These ones, you can see how they're put together. And this has gotten loose in there, which makes your, which makes your blade wobble around. These ones are, you can see it's, it's tight still. And this one is still tight. So this is how I'm going to drill them out. I'm going to start with a center drill, then a larger center drill, then 3 16 then a quarter, and then 5 16 So I've got these holes. This one had two bolts busted in it. I've got them up to quarter inch now. So I'm going to Go ahead now and drill them to 5 16 And then what I've decided I'm going to do is to avoid this madness in the future from now on, my spindles are going to be held on with bolts and nuts. Uh, we don't want to break any more bolts off in them. So I'm going to drill them out to 5 16 this step. And then I'm going to go one more size just to give it a little clearance. I'll do the same to that one. And then we're going to drill the side of them and put a grease fitting in and and pop the inner seal out of the bearing so we can keep this thing greased. All right, so we're going to use our original housings and try to make uh, a good pair. And I'm going to just pick the best of what's left and make one good spare one. So first of all, we know these things are loose, so we're going to switch them over to there. And we're going to bring these ones to our machine. Now what I got to do is I got to get the remains of these old bearings and stuff off and I'm going to knock the bearings out of this one. And uh, what I'm going to do is what they've done with this one is knock the inner seal out of it. So it'll take grease. Next thing we're going to do is drill and tap the side of each of these for a grease fitting. These I think are 1 16th pipe or something like that. Anyway. What I find is that quarter fine is a nice match for them. So 
I've gone ahead and drilled this with a number three. You need a number drill, a number three, which is the correct size for quarter fine. And uh, I countersunk the entry to the hole. Now we're going to run our tap down it. And then our grease fitting should screw right in. This bearing doesn't want to come off, but it, it's nice and smooth, so we're good to go. Now I'm going to go through the rest of these bearings and pick the ones that I, that I think are the best. i got to find three more. And we're going to do exactly this. We're going to leave the seal on one side to keep stuff out of it, and we're going to remove the seal on the side that faces the grease. That way that will let us get be able to grease these spindles, which is part of the reason they fail. All right, so they both have a lower bearing now. Now we can go ahead and install them in our housings, and then we can put the top bearing in. Here's two bearings we'll use for the upper. They run nice and smooth. I've pulled the inner seals out of them, so we'll put them on, and then we can go over to the press and push the retainers back on. Here's our two spindles that we're going to use. I pressed them together and pumped them full of grease and they're nice and free and they run smoothly. Now I'm going to uh, use the leftovers here and see if I can make one more for spare. I'm going to one of these loose ones here and we're just going to go on center punch, center punch, center punch so we can get this back tight in its bore. Um, that's about all we can really do in this situation. And then we've got two bearings left. We'll put them in there and pump it full of grease and we've at least got a spare spindle if we ever break one. Here's a good spare we can box up and keep for a rainy day. Here's our deck ready for a couple of coats of bright yellow paint. Um, I'm going to skip the actual proper John Deere yellow on this because I found a couple of old cans of trim clad bright yellow. It's yellow. Good enough for me. Got the underside of the deck all painted. When that's dry, we'll flip it over and do the top. That sure looks snazzy, doesn't it? Once it dries, we can start putting the deck back together. First, we'll install the spindles. I, I've modified them to have grease fittings. Um, so we're going to mount them in so that the grease fittings are outboard, so they're easy to get at with the grease gun. Now I'm going to install the gauge wheels, or the anti-scalp wheels. I was going to replace these old blades, but um, I'm going to try and get one more season out of them. I just use this thing to mow the ditch, so uh, they're good enough for that. We'll sharpen them up here on the angle grinder, and they'll get me through the summer. Well, it's the underneath done. Now we can start putting all the pulleys and stuff on the top of it. So far I've gotten the bracket for the um, engage cable, I guess you would call it, or the PTO cable. Um, these are the, the spindle pulleys. This is a, an idler pulley, and this here is also an idler pulley, but this is the one that the cable pulls on to actually apply the PTO to drive the deck. Now we're going to install the... These are the brakes, the pulley brakes, for when you disengage the PTO, these theoretically should stop the pulley. So we'll put them on and um, see if we can figure out how to adjust them up. So these are adjusted up properly when there's, you can see there's a space there between the nut and the, and the brake shoe bracket. That allows this spring here to apply the brake shoe independent of this. This is this is only to release it, the, the link that is, is only to release it, not to apply it. So when the PTO is engaged, it pulls the brake away. And when you release the PTO, the shoe contacts the pulley and stops the blade. Now I guess we could fish the belt through it. Now we're going to install the belt cover on this end. Uh, which also doubles as a belt keeper honor. You can see it's got these ribs in here and On this side, they've actually embedded a, a piece of steel in there, which this belt has already worn well into Anyway, we'll get that on and then there's two other little 
little belt holder honors that go on on the other side. Now I'll install the hanger brackets for the, the deck. I'm going to put them approximately where they were when I took it apart. And then once the deck is hanging from the tractor, we'll get out the little tool and level it properly so it cuts nice. So now we're going to get the deck back under the tractor. The first thing we got to do, obviously, is uh, slide it under. So here's the two hanger rods that the deck hangs from on this side. In the winter time, I tie wrap them up so they're not hanging down. We'll just cut our tie wrap here. We have to uh, lower the control. Let's see here. So we got these two hangers on, and they just take a washer and a little clippy thing. I like to push them right through like that, and you know they're not coming off for nothing. And we'll do the same on the other side. Next thing we got to do is get the belt onto the crank pulley. It just it goes it goes through this retainer and then around the pulley. Easy peasy. This here is the front hanger rod. So it fishes through here. Hang on. You can't see it. It fishes through there. I don't know how I usually do this. To me, it, I don't recall it being so, so aggravating. Anyway, there it is. And then it goes through there like that on the deck. Then, of course, there's a washer and a little hair clip we put on. Last thing we have to do is engage the PTO cable. So first thing we do, uh, this spring goes in. It engages the hole. I can feel it with my finger because I sure as heck can't see it. In the, in the idler lever. Then we pull the cable back and put it through the bracket there. And put our hair clip through it. There we go. Now, right now, you can see the belt is sloppy, and if I go up and engage the PTO, it should it should pull it should pull this either over like this and tighten up the belt. Let's see what happens. Yeah, perfect. It's pulled everything nice and tight, so we're ready to mow. Now, what we have to do is level this deck. So, to level this deck, the first thing we want to do is lift it up so that the gauge wheels are off the ground which on this will probably be uh, three and a half, are they up? No, they're just touching, so I'll take it right up to four. There we go. Now the deck is hanging as it does when you're mowing. Now we're going to level the deck. We've got a few adjustments to do. Uh, first, we have to adjust it so that the mower height actually matches what's on the quadrant over there. So. When it's set at four, it should be at four inches, etc. We're also going to level the deck front to back so it cuts nice. And we're going to level it side to side so it cuts nice. So I've got the quadrant set to three and a half. And Perfect. There's our gauge setting right at three and a half. That's this side. Now I'm going to go measure the other side and see if it's at three and a half. That'll determine if our side to side level is good. On this side, our reading is about three and three quarters, even a little bit more. So we have to lower this side of the deck a little bit further. So after measuring, the blade on the other side is at three and a half. This one is at three and an eighth. So we have to lift this side of the deck a tiny bit. So I've got it packed up with shims now. So we'll loosen the nut and push this thing down three-eighths of an inch, probably almost uh, to bottom it out. Okay, so we've got three and three-eighths on each side, and the control is set at three and a half. 
That's as close as dang it is to swearing for me. And now we're going to worry about front to rear. So there's our front measurement, two and seven eighths, and our back measurement is three and three eighths. So we're a half an inch low in the front. I have to take away three eighths of that. So we're going to start cranking on that front bolt and see how much of it we can get away. New problem. I've got this ball buried all the way down till it bottoms out and I can't get the front of the deck pulled up quite high enough. So what we have to do is, is, is somehow shorten this link. Um, I'm going to probably take it over to the press and see if I can squash it a bit. Right now it's uh, about 10 and a half inches long. So I'm going to see if by um, embellishing some of these angles a little bit, I could shorten it up um, a quarter or even a half an inch. Every little That should do it. We made it about half an inch shorter. So now I'll go put it back on and we'll see how that works out. All right, there we go. We finally got it. That took a lot of screwing around, but now it's perfectly level from side to side, and the front of it is cuts about an eighth of an inch lower than the back. So that's it for the deck. It went pretty well. It's back hung under there, leveled up, ready to go. Um, all I'm waiting on for it, I did order some new decals for it from the dealer just to kind of give it that little pop. And on top of that, it's pretty important to have the decals on there. The ones that say, don't stick your toes under here if you like them. Uh, don't stick your fingers under here if you like them. And watch out from the chute because it'll fire stuff at you. Um, as silly as it sounds, the, the way the world is today, you want to make sure you got your butt covered. So get them warning stickers on there. Any piece of equipment that you fix and paint at home, go to the dealer if at all possible and get the warning stickers for it. Even if they don't make them anymore, get something close and put them on there. It might save your butt in the end. Because you don't want to find out the hard way what can happen, bad stuff. If, you know, for instance, your half in the bag neighbor comes over on a Saturday afternoon to see what you're doing and ends up getting his foot cut off by your lawnmower. And the lawyers have a heyday with stuff like that. So please, cover your butt. Anyway, that's enough doom and gloom. I'm just happy my mower deck is fixed and back hanging from the lawnmower. In the next video, uh, we'll go over getting the lawnmower all put back together and spiffed up and ready to go back to work. Anyway, until then, thanks for tuning in. And this is Kevin checking out from the Claremont Classic Garage. So long.